On this episode, Christian attempts to pronounce a word. Compar- compartment. No. Compartment. We lose all of our stars. They're all going away. No. But then we bring them back and make them look awesome. Oh. Hmm. Hi everybody. I'm Christian. This is Lazy Devs Academy. Hmm. We are doing a little shmup. And if you watched last episode. Well, then probably you don't need to download the file of the current episode, which is going to be us always in a doobly-doo. Ah, uh, but yeah, check check this out, check this out. <laughs> we have a beautiful star-filled sky, star, star-filled simula- simulation happening here. But it's very static. You know, you can, I mean, if we're going to be really honest, this is actually quite, quite realistic to some extent. <laughs> Stars are very far away. <laughs> like if you have you're a real astronaut in a spaceship and <laughs> going in the direction, the stars won't move. Uh, at least not with current technology. Uh, you shall. It's, you know, I, I'm a bit of a Kerbal Space Program uh, a fanatic, uh, veteran, and uh, yeah, yeah. If you play that game, you realize that yeah, the stars don't move when you fly through space usually. Uh, but yeah, like that's. This is not realism. This is schmuppland, and schmuppland, uh, you know, emotional truth <laughs> counts more <laughs> than realism, right? So we want to have the the stars move down. That would feel nice. Uh, how are we going to make the stars move down? And also, like they're a bit harsh. It would be nice to maybe change the colors a little bit. Uh, that's something that we want to do today. Last time around, we did a very very big episode with a lot of new concepts, uh, which was uh, the lists, uh, or arrays, or tables. And we created two tables of star X and star Y um, that store the coordinates uh, for a whole bunch of stars, a hundred stars. Uh, and then we add them here at the beginning in the init function. That's where we, we add them, we create the stars. And here uh, we have a little function that we created ourselves uh, that um, uh, goes through uh, both tables and prints them on the screen every frame we're printing 100 stars and it's just like nothing it's nothing it still runs fluently uh if you want to see you know how much we're taxing pico 8 it's you know it's not, not running at the full speed of the machine that you're on usually uh, but you can go control p and it shows you how much uh, the system is being taxed right now uh, you have the uh, number 0.02 if that number reaches one that means that you are hitting the limits of what Pico 8 can pull off. As you can see, Pico 8 is like 100 stars. Come on, can, I, I can do more. Okay, let's 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 do thousand. Let's see how that. Whoa, 0.07, no problem. How about 10,000 stars? Okay, that, that, that <laughs> we're halfway there. Okay, <laughs> suddenly there's this jump, right? Uh, so yeah, now we are kind of like running at the half speed of what Pico 8 can, can pull off. Isn't that amazing that we're drawing so many stars and it's doing still fine? Like, so if we do like 50,000 stars. Oh, actually we're running into limits of the, uh, of the actual numbers, right? Because as I said, 32,000 something, something, right? That's the maximum number of things you can do put in a variable. And in fact, if we have so many stars, if you see everything turns red, uh, we kind of like running overboard. We start dropping frames. So there's some frames where we're not drawing a frame and we're just doing the update function. 20,000 stars, is that good? Oh, 20,000 is also not good. Oh, weird. Did I make a mistake there? 18,000, 18,000 is fine. <laughs> 18,000 stars is the limit. It's good to see the limits here. So as you can see, like it's it's, uh, the, the, by the way, the, sc- the only reason why the sc- uh, screen is not filled with white right now is that, you know, it's random and sometimes you have stars on the same spot. Yeah, we can do a lot of stars. We don't need that many stars. Let's just do let's just it 100. I think that seems fine. Right. So, um, control P will turn off the, the, the profiler telling you how quickly Pico 8 runs. Good. So we now have to move the stars, which means we have to actually animate them. We have to actually go into the uh, the tables and actually change something about the tables. 
Now I will actually for this, I will create a separate function. You probably don't need necessarily always a second function, but I want to get us into this habit. I want, I want us to start to, uh, to, for this idea to feel more familiar that we kind of like, you know, put things into, into baskets, you know, and so, so things are not um, just hanging in there somewhere in like a huge update function, but are kind of like compar compartment no, compartmentalized. There we go. <laughs> um, so function and uh, anim and any stars, any stars, animate stars, animate stars. Okay, just call it animate stars. Whatever. Okay. Animate stars, and we're gonna put this uh, function in the update function. And now we can we can just put it all the way at the end. That's fine. It's fine. At the end, we're gonna animate stars. Open close parentheses. Don't forget that. That's important. Okay. Animate stars, and in this function, we're gonna animate the stars. Uh, we again we're putting it in a separate function. We could do it technically here as well, but I want us to keep this idea that um, all the update stuff gameplay and things changing, you know, variable name, uh, variable contents changing, that is happening in the update function and the drawing is happening in the draw function and those two are not mixing up too much. Uh, but yeah, like technically you could do it in a star field function as well, that's fine. What I want to do here now is I want to loop through all of the stars. I want to do another loop here, like this, the same thing, the same principle applies. Drawing, going through all of the stars, uh, but not through a star X because X is the X position of the star, and we don't care about that. We don't want to animate. They also they all just want to move down. So we're gonna uh, say for i equals one, uh, uh, you're gonna loop through all of the star y. Now we said like star X and star y should have the same value, so you know it actually doesn't really matter. But I just want to make you know, come on. <laughs> Okay, so we're gonna say, well, we have to animate this, right? We have to increase the, that number. So if, you, if the star is gonna move down, then we have to increase the position. Like we have to make this position go higher because further down is higher. It's, it's not higher, it's higher. It's, it's confusing. So uh, the position of the star is a wide position and the lower um, uh, edge of the screen is a high number, the upper edge of the screen is a low number. So if you want to move something down, you have to move it towards the high number. So we have to increase things. So we're going to do star X square brackets. I, I'm going to put the I inside the square brackets. We're going to address an entry in the star. No, it's not star X, star Y. And we're going to address an entry in the star Y uh, table. Um, we're going to say equals star Y I, I'm going to just repeat it, plus one. I'm just going to add one to it. Just, let's see what happens. Oh, perfect. Oh no, <laughs> they're all going away. No. <laughs> yeah, that's right. They're all going away. I mean, they're moving down and it just then they just go leave the screen and then bye bye. <laughs> yeah, uh, we have to reset them if they leave the screen. So we're going to have to do some if statement here. I'm going to go if star y square bracket i is greater than 128, then star y square brackets i equals star. This is getting a little bit annoying, right? Like we have to always write star y square brackets i. That's, that's annoying. Can we just... Can we just like have like a shortcut here? <laughs> can, is that possible? Yes, it's possible. Totally possible. Uh, this is now the part where I will show you a local variable. I think this is a good example for a local variable. So I'm going to go, go uh, local. I'm going to write the name local. We're going to create a new variable local, uh, uh, like using the the word local. And we now we have to invent a variable name, something like uh, sy, star y equals star y square brackets i. We're going to create a new variable that exists only very briefly. And I think just like for the duration of this for uh, a single for next loop. 
and we're going to put the contents from star y inside that variable and that allows us to make this very very complicated text i'm gonna we're gonna make this very very easy uh, so for example this line oops this one is going to be sy equals sy plus one huh. that's so so much more pleasant to look at right and then if sy is greater than 128 then sy equals star uh, 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 sy minus 128. So if the stars leave the screen, we're just gonna move it 128 uh, pixels up. And that's it. I'm gonna save it and run it. it <laughs> this won't work, uh, uh, but it's gonna work maybe in an interesting way. Hmm. <laughs> I thought it would be maybe more interesting. Yeah. It doesn't work. Why doesn't it work? Well, <laughs> because of our helper variable here. So we take the value out of star y and we put it in this variable and we do some kind of stuff. So we do some math, we do an if statement here, but then that value disappears. We don't do anything. We have to write it back into this, the, the, the table. So we're going to do, um, at the end, we're going to do star y, i equals s y gonna take whatever calculations we made and with the sy variable and we're gonna write it back into our array. And it's just like I'm using the, this sy variable just because it's more pleasant to read. And it, remember this local thing means that it is only, um, this is only something that happens within this loop. So for example, before I define it, I'm gonna print. First of all, let, before I, I demonstrate um, the local statement. Let's just see if this worked, if that solved the problem. Yes, it solved the problem. Now we are scrolling through an endless sky of beautiful, beautiful uh, stars. That's nice. Right, so let us demonstrate the, um, the SY thing. So, so I'm gonna print um, SY here and I'm gonna print SY at the end. It doesn't print anything. Well, to be fair, we're printing inside an update function, so that will get overwritten anyway. Uh, but yeah, like for example, I can maybe, how about I print SY in the star field? Nil, there's a white nil in, in the corner, you see? It just doesn't exist, it doesn't exist. It's a, it's a ghost, you know? It's just there for a brief amount of time and then it just disappears. Uh, that's that's a local variable and we're gonna use local variables a lot because they're kind of like really nice and neat Kind of helping us a little bit out here Okay, okay now. I like this but it just lo looks a little bit flat <laughs> Harsh criticism from Christian right here. It looks a little bit um, and the the, the, um, the stars are just very bright or and they're just all scrolling past like like in a wallpaper kind of situation but they're also even like repeating, like it's, can we add some variation? And yes, we absolutely can. Uh, something I would like to add here, uh, something that really helps here is adding uh, colors, colors, and then adding different speeds, make it like go at different speeds. Let's try that. And then we encounter a whole new problem. Uh, and that is that we kind of have to, like this means if you want to have variable speeds, that means that our, there's more information about every star that we have to keep track of. And that means we just have to create a new table. So we're going to have star S for star speed. And then, yeah, that's going to be also empty. We're going to start empty. And then here we're just going to add a number in star speed. What kind of number? This time I'm gonna actually del delete the floor. And this, you can already see the problem here, right? There's like three parentheses right after each other. It's like, which parentheses fits to where? Like, it's insane. Okay, a random number. Um, I don't know, what, what is fast star? Let's do a random number between zero and two. And let's take the comma values. Don't, don't floor it. Close the parentheses. There's two parentheses that we have to close here. Uh, just to show you uh, this open parentheses, this close parentheses, and this open parentheses, and this close parentheses. If you get confused with the parentheses, it will tell you. Huh, interesting, look at this. Oh, right. <clears throat> we, <laughs> we put this in star y 
it should be put in star s or actually stars now. Maybe should, we should call it SPD, star SPD. Yeah, that, that's, that's a bit better. Right. Now nothing is visible because we're actually not reacting to our star SPD. We have to change star SPD. Uh, right, right, right. Oh yeah, by the way, I want to show you what happens if we remove one parenthesis. Ah, see, it says in unclosed parentheses. It tells us, it knows that we missed a parenthesis, but it doesn't tell us. It doesn't automatically do it for us. It wouldn't be nice if it was like, fix this for me, <laughs> but uh, yeah, okay. So now we have created a new list and we filled it with some numbers, with some common numbers. And now this speed is actually the speed at which we should animate the star. Uh, let's go back to our animate stars function here. And uh, the thing that we want to change is this, this SY, uh, or specifically this plus one, right? This is the speed at which the stars are moving. I want to put a different number in here and that I want to pull that number from our star SPD uh, array from our list, star SPD square brackets I. I'm going to use again, the same counter, the I counter to access that list as well. Does, doesn't that look amazing? I mean, I, I can see the variation now. That's really cool. I think the speed of the fastest stars feels nice. It feels nice and, and, and fast. That seems good. But the speed of the lowest stars is way too slow, right? Like you can see some stars are barely... Look at this star that I would put my nose at. Look at how slow this, this is moving. It's just not, it's just stationary. That doesn't feel great. That feels like it should maybe, it should, there should be like a minimum speed that we should drive towards. So this means we have to do a bit math. Right, so we take R and D two, we, we take a number from zero to two, but we take common numbers. Let's add some number to it because this R and D function will sometimes spit out a number that's close to zero. And in order to make up for this, we kind of want to add always like a fixed number maybe to this. So, and that becomes the minimum number that, that, that will be inside the speed uh, table. So we're just gonna go plus 0 0.5, something like this. So 0 0.5 is the minimum number that we're gonna have in our, as, as a speed. This also raised the maximum speed, but this is good. This is good. I like this. Um, I uh, you can see that the stars, um, the slowest stars, are kind of like moving a little bit. So now, so so we have like a minimum speed established. That's really good. Um, I think the fastest stars are a bit too fast now, in order to make up for the fact that we're always adding 0 0.5 to the random number. We can we kind of have to maybe lower the highest number that we can generate. Uh, to make up for it. So, so something like R&D 1.5, let's try that. And you know, this is something that's very typical of programming that you d just don't know the numbers and you have to figure them out by just like tweaking them around and, and, and running it. Yeah. Yeah, that seems good. I like this. This is good. This is, this is fun. Cool. Cool, cool, cool. Now we want to change colors and here's the thing. I don't like this. This is bad. And we're going to very soon learn a new way of doing this that just will, because I don't like how we always have to create a new table for every time there is a new property of the object that we're doing. Like that's, that's getting, getting out of hand a little bit, right? Let's keep that in mind for a future episode. But for now, I think there's a easy way of doing this. And that is we can, we can, we might be able to kind of figure out a color of, of the star by how fast it's going. Because, you know, kind of like you, th you have this impression that stars that are close, that they should be brighter because they're close to you. That's why they're scrolling pa past quickly. And stars that are very, very far away, that they move slowly, uh, they're they far away. So they should be dimmer, right? So maybe we can make it so that the fast moving stars are bright and the far away uh, stars are, are dim, right? Like, can, can, can we make it something like this? Let's try that. So here in the star field animation, this is because this is a drawing kind of thing. Like we, as we draw, we're going to figure out the color of the star, depending on how fast it's going. Uh, the color of the star is seven right now. What do, I have to do, do we have to do? We have to have a variable, but this time we're going to have again, a local variable 
let's do a local variable local uh, we're gonna go s called star color <laughs> and we're gonna set it to seven right now all right and we're gonna plug this local variable there into the color uh, of, of the of the pixel that we're setting we're setting in the color seven here that seven again is the, the white here and we plug in s call all right that's that's not exciting, nothing changed. Sure, the S, S call is always seven right now. But now we can do like an if statement. And uh, with this if statement, we can filter out the stars. And, and uh, if the star is uh, slow, then for example, let's give it a very, very dim color. So we're gonna go if star uh, star SPD is the, is the table that contains the speed of stars. So we're going to go if star SPD, we're going to look up the star that we're drawing, the number of the star that we're drawing. The number of star we're drawing is I, right? That's the counter of the loop that we're going through. If star SPD I um, is smaller, okay, 0 0.5 is the minimum. Let's, let's say smaller than one. And then And now inside the if statement, we're going to change the uh, our, our variable, our color variable, to something else. Let's set it to let's set it to this blue color. Really, really dim. We're going to set s call to one. Oh, that already looks pretty dope. Or oh man, I. Mm. You see how it gets like this parallax effect immediately. How the, the slow moving stars are like feel are as they're. In the background, you have like this 3D effect. You know, they don't need any glasses. Go away, Zuckerberg, with your multiverse. Uh, uh, no, metaverse. Oh, Jesus. Uh, we don't need any of that. We don't need the glasses. It, we can create depth with images. That's really amazing. Uh, we can put a um, layer in between. We could do a second if statement. If star SPD. But now we kind of run into a problem, right? Because we have to like, okay, like if you say, okay, let's say, um, because what, what is the maximum? The maximum that we can have is two. So let's go like if star SPD is smaller than 1.5, then, mm, and then let's give it like this color, for example, here. So we get, add, so I want to have actually some colors, not just grays, because it's so easy just to pick the grays, but I think the grays is going to be, make things a bit drab. So I want to maybe pick this color, the color 13. So we're going to go S call um, equals 13, if it's more than 1.5. And then you can see immediately a certain problem that we have. Now the blue stars disappeared. The very, very dim, slow moving star, they all now turned gray. Hmm. And the problem is here is that we're turning um, the slow stars into the color one, but then we have this if statement and that if statement smaller than 1.5, that also includes stars that have been already turned into uh, the very dark color. So all of the stars that have been turned into the dark color, the color number uh, one, uh, are turned into the light gray color, the 13. So we're kind of like undoing this if statement with this if statement. Uh, we could solve this problem by re just rearranging, just doing it like this. I think that would work. Yeah, it works. It looks nice. Maybe the default color is not going to be the white because the pure white is a bit... Let's set it to six. Let's see how that looks. So uh, we're going to start the colors with six. Yeah, that looks better. Mm. Mm, mm, mm. I like this. This is good. <clears throat> um, yeah, but I want to maybe show you a different way of, of solving this problem. We have like these two if statements. We can combine them into one if statement. That's kind of like really neat. We already saw the else thing, right? We could do an else. We could do that too. We could do an else and do the if statement inside the else, which is weird, but you can do that. But that's kind of weird, right? So that's why uh, we have the else if. 
uh, let me let me put it um, let me move this around so it's it's like um, so we reproduce the bug that we had previously. So let's let's put the this statement here first and the second statement here, just like to show you. Uh, no blue stars. We want to have blue stars. So we're gonna have this this check, and then if and then we do, I'm gonna do else if and then this check else if again english language so I, I think this this should this should make sense right it works so it checks if this statement is true and if this statement is true it will set a color but if this statement is false then it will check if this statement is true right if this is false not going to set this color but then we're going to still check if this is true and then, if that's true, we're going to set the the the, uh, the the bright gray color. Ability to combine to kind of like two if statements in each other, and quite often something that you will see is like you know, just a huge list of if statements else, combined all of them together into like a huge list of else if, right? You could have like more colors, right? You could use more colors from the rainbows, and we could have have like this huge table of, of else if statements going through different thresholds of speeds and and adding a different color to that kind of speed that's that's cool now I said I wanted to maybe reorganize um, our program a little bit but I figured um, we're gonna actually maybe devote an entire episode for this I want to have like maybe topically kind of like close the episodes so they are oh we're always doing one thing in an episode and so I think maybe we're gonna make turn this episode into a shorter episode um, and uh, we're gonna give you a cool um, uh, uh, doggy zone instead. That's right. We're gonna go move on to the doggy zone. Right for today's doggy zone, I actually have a whole list of, of cool tasks for you to try out, and I think uh, yeah, these are gonna be interesting challenges. Um, so first challenge, very simple, not very simple, but it's gonna be simpler. As I said, you know, we have two colors now. Actually, three colors, right? We have the default color and then two extra colors for the stars. Add a new color. Pick one from from the list here. Maybe you know they don't have to follow. You know, like a, uh, a bright dark pattern here. You can just add maybe something like crazy, something like a like a yellow color or something like this. You just add a color in here. See if you can figure this out. Task number one. Task number two is: What if there are not just dots? What if the star field actually includes something? else right so uh, I think a good thing to try out is I and, and that's that's really fun I think that that's a really really nice effect if the fast moving stars are actually little lines yeah like little vertical vertical lines uh, you can do that by just trying a, maybe a sprite of a line you can you can just do that right uh, or you can get yourself into the line statement we haven't talked about the line statement but it is in the cheat sheet uh, let's see, where is the, that's our beautiful cheat sheet, and it is, uh, la, 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 la. shapes, obviously. So let's zoom in here, so you can see that there's a line statement, um, and you can see the parameters that it takes, like x, uh, y, 0, x, 1, x, and then call. These are a little bit cryptic. Whenever you have something in a, in a, in a cheat sheet that we haven't learned about, and you want to learn more about it, uh, one good place to do this is the Pico 8 wiki. Uh, yeah, that's right. So Pico8, uh, Pico-8.fandom.com uh, will get you to the Pico8 wiki. So yeah, this is the the wiki for Pico8 stuff, and you can search and, and look up different different uh, functions. Uh, let's look up the line function, and yeah, that's going to be the line statement here. So you can see, you know, the line here reference, and um, you can see like. Um, uh, there are parameters, and each parameter is explained verbally in English language to you exactly. And then there is uh, that's something that I like the most. Here's some examples down here. Um, lose using the line statement in, in various ways, and that's uh, to me that's always most useful because that's I can usually understand uh, how they're doing things um, by just looking at the code. The co code is commented, so I think you can just copy and paste it in your program and see what it does. But yeah, you can use this to draw lines. 
And it's going to be fun maybe for you to just figure it out yourself without me having to explain to you. Uh, later on, when you finish the tutorial, you will rely on the Pico8 wiki to find out things about Pico8. Right, but um, if you don't want to do lines, uh, something you can also do is like, just, you know, draw a little asteroid maybe or something like this. And then every now and then an asteroid maybe flies by and not necessarily a star. I think that would be fine too. Uh, don't make the asteroids too prominent because it will then seem that they are uh, like something you can shoot at. So maybe I would just do the asteroids like, you know, just like a shadow of an asteroid in the background or something. I think that would be fun too. Or maybe like a planet, that would be also fun. And the fourth challenge, that is the real challenge now. Never mind about, about star fields. Can you make the bullets work now? Can you make it so that you can fire multiple bullets? That would be the real challenge to try out now. Right? All right, so that is gonna be the doggy zone. This is the moment where, as always, at the end of each episode, I will give a huge shout out to my coffee crew. That's right, this video series has been made possible through the generous support of my supporters on Coffee. Thank you so much for your support. And if you aren't a supporter yet, consider a sub or a one-time donation over at Coffee. One of the major perks is that you'll gain access to new episodes of this series earlier, so there's no need to wait. And there's also all sorts of other behind the scenes features. Check it out at coffee.com slash lazydevs. That is right, and this is it, ladies and gentlemen. So this was uh, Starfield, two episodes just devoted to Starfield, but we went into some very, very important tool sets that will allow us eventually to have a crazy amount of objects on the screen. There is one thing that, that we're gonna have to deal with, um, maybe not next episode, but the episode afterwards. On the next episode, I actually want to do the thing I was talking about. I want to actually organize this. Something I don't like about this is that just like it starts immediately on the game. I want to have like a start screen. I want to have game over screen and so forth. We're gonna have to organize things a little bit, create our little state machine. That's right, we're gonna talk about state machines. See you next time around, guys, bye bye.